<laughs> well, I'm, I'm having a, we got to have a quick conversation. Everybody will love that. Uh, and I didn't answer your question. This is for Bravo, California, which goes out to about 6,000 people. All, it's the video all over Southern California, oh, wow. particularly. And also for my lovely Casa uh, Santa Barbara, Casa Magazine in Santa Barbara, Little Arts Weekly in Santa Barbara. We do yes. a, we'll do a re reduced. Anywho, I am, I am talking to Alexandra Lobianco, and she has the really amazing opportunity and a whole lot of stuff we'll talk about. She is the soprano, and she is uh, singing uh, the lead role in uh, Giancarlo Manotti's The Consul. And we're going to talk a lot about this work, I hope, within 12 minutes. Uh, but the point is, she plays the character Magda Sorel. She'll give us a little rundown on the plot briefly. But the point is, this is a work by Giancarlo Manotti that premiered in 1950. It won the Pulitzer Prize, or a little before, probably. It won the Pulitzer Prize in 1950. It won the New York City Drama Critics Circle Award in 1950. It ran on Broadway. Hello? Yes. Broadway? Yes. Not the Hello, Metropolitan Broadway. Theaters. This is a crossover work I had no idea as a kid when I used to I listened to it over and over again as a kid and I'm revisiting it some 50 or more years later um, but this is really a masterpiece uh, it is a dramatic role. Uh, 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 oh, uh, definitely. Alexandra will speak to that. But <laughs> let's get started with, with uh, um, and, and I, I know we're, we're let me get, deal with some of your colleagues, okay? We've got Joshua Jeremiah, baritone, and we have mm -hmm. Nina Yoshida Nelson, and she is one of ours uh, back to, yeah. uh, to sing for. She sings the role of the secretary at the consulate. Uh, Alexandra will give us a little, little idea of what that role is. Uh, Joshua mm -hmm. is John Sorrell. Magda Sorrell's husband, uh, and we'll talk about that. But first, Alexandra, give me just a little brief capsule. We've got all the good stuff about your debuts and, and, and all that good thing, but what, what is the, where's the history, where's the start, where did, what colleges, that kind of thing? Oh, my goodness. Well, I actually started off as a double major, as a performance clarinetist. Oh, no. No, no, no. I'm a clarinetist. Oh, my That's God. That's true. I was a, I was a double <laughs> performance major uh, initially in college, and actually on scholarship for my clarinet before I was for my voice. Um, I was a mezzo at that point in time. I started, you know, I started at the University of South Florida in Tampa, Florida, and I almost quit music. I went to, a, I was ready to quit. I was a bit burnt out, nine ensembles my freshman year or so, made, made things a little interesting, <laughs> playing multiple different instruments and um, playing, uh, already gigging at 18, playing pit orchestra gigs uh, was a lot. And so I got burnt out and went to a junior college at the time, which is now St. Petersburg College in St. Petersburg, Florida, and got my associate's degree and fell back in love with music and really found my way back to loving it as part of my being and not just my job or already at that time at 18 years old, which just sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Um, and I had the intention of transferring to go into music therapy um, to finish my degree, and that, which is what, which is what led me to Appalachian State University in Boone, North Carolina. Um, and I, I went up there initially for therapy, and you know, this little thing in my chest called my heart went thump, 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 thump as soon as I started to audition. And I said, nope, I cannot get my heart off the stage. There's something in me that tells me I need to be on stage. And I finished yeah. only my bachelor's at Appalachian State University in Boone, North Carolina. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good at state girl. <laughs> I'm a good mountaineer. Um, and I, at that point in time, um, I was still a mezzo. Started working with uh, Upper Carolina in Charlotte, North Carolina in the forest. This is big. Yeah, it was a really wonderful big. first job. Yeah. Um, and I, a couple years after that, I met my, my now teacher and mentor, uh, which is where I made my switch. Her name is Carol Kirkpatrick, and she will actually be coming to the opening of this show, and I'm thrilled because it's the first time she'll ever get to see me perform in 10 years of working with her. Um, we've been working with each other. I, I've been working with her since 2004, uh, right after my first debut with Opera Carolina, which was The Lady in Waiting to Lady Macbeth and Verity's Macbeth. So, you know, no pressure to start off a career. <laughs> start the career with Verity. Here we go, <laughs> and on we go. Um, and my first lesson with Carol, I will never forget it. Uh, she she warmed me up my first couple of scales, et cetera, and she looked at me after I finished and went, well, number one, you're using about a third of your voice. 
And number two, you're a soprano. Hmm. We fought about this for the next year. Yeah. <laughs> that little fact. And it wasn't until I started working, I coached with um, Nico Castell, who was a very famous uh, character tenor, as, as well as librettist and uh, translator of, of operas, that <laughs> he looked at me and said, my dear, you understand. There are no 26-year-old dramatic sopranos, but you are very, very close. And it was through him. Um, so my education really developed after collegiate studies. Um, and I, 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 I'm glad you mentioned dramatic soprano. We are looking yes. at. I'm, I'm trying to. Get, I'm going to get us back to console. Thank you very much. What a brilliant <laughs> overview. Uh, but but uh, in in the console, very. Mm -hmm. It's a very dramatic work, and it's based sure. on a, it's based on a true story, as I understand it. And the it is the boogeymen are not the uh, are not the commies or the Soviets. Yeah. The boogeyman in the true story is the U.S. consulate Absolutely. and how slow consulates in general are to yes. help people who are in desperate need and remember everybody who's alive was alive then I was kind of I know about this now but the 1950 the end of World War two and the uh, the uh, beginnings of the Iron Court curtain and the deep deep Cold War and this opera is about that struggle that you Alexandra have to try yes. and uh, find asylum for your husband and your family why don't you give us a quick overview of the story, if you can, in a quick way? <laughs> well, well, you've actually kind of already done it in many ways. Um, my, my husband is a freedom fighter, and my, my mother and my child uh, and I are waiting for him to come back from one of his meetings. And at this point, it is the very beginning of the opera, and he's been shot at by the police. And we have to get him away. We have to help him escape to another country. Um, through the course of the opera, he says, go to the consulate go through the proper channels, go and do this, tell them about my, my child, my, my mother, etc., and come and join me in this, this other country. And it is a fictitious country, according to Minotti. He says this is a fictitious country, even though the idea is that it's based on the U.S. But, but it, that was actually more about Magda's character in particular. It was one particular story um, that we're talking about with the consulate here, with, the, with Ellis, Ellis Island, basically, yeah. in the United States. Um, but... It is truly about the love of, of a wife and the determination. And I'm playing her a little differently than sometimes is done. So we're playing her as a freedom fighter herself. Good. And I... that she is very strong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. And that the reason for the, for the end of the opera, which I'm not going to give away because it's, it is rather tragic. There, there are a few deaths sadly along the way my child is already sick so the child passes um the secret police are coming to my house constantly to try to uh, to try to get me to pay more money uh, to get the knowledge of john's friends etc anybody who knows or reads spy novels or <laughs> anything like this will understand immediately what it's you know the, the idea of the secret police and the spies and everybody coming to my house and trying to figure out do, what do i know what do i really know and um, anybody who's ever sat in the DMV will know exactly what it's like <laughs> to sit in the consulate office mm -hmm. filling out paperwork upon paperwork upon paperwork upon paperwork. Yeah. And getting <laughs> so nowhere. Idea... Hmm? And getting nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. Every day it's coming back and doing the same thing over and over again. But let, let's remind everybody, I think I did in the earlier, but if not, I want to repeat it again anyway. <laughs> The Consul, Giancarlo Minotti, eight months on Broadway, a huge success in 1950 as a musical. So this is really a fascinating crossover work. And how does that work in terms of your voice, your professional training uh -huh. in opera? What is is there or not anything? Because we, we are talking about Minotti, the opera conduct composer. We are, we are. So um, what, what is that? You know, this piece is really fascinating. I like to call it an actor's opera hmm. is the best way I like to describe it. And I came, before I got into opera, before I worked at Upper Carolina, I actually did some outdoor theater and, and summer stock and did straight plays as well. And I've done some musical theater. And I, and I like the belt on occasion. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you, you're, you're likely to find me at, at, a, at a piano bar in New York every once in a while singing some cabaret, maybe this time. Um, and belting up to the high F. Uh, <laughs> so for, for me, it's, it's a wonderful... Um, it's a wonderful use of all of my skills. I, you really have to be present and fully committed throughout the piece. 
my character is basically off stage maybe 10, 20 minutes total yeah. in the whole three hours of, of the opera. Um, and it is a, a true uh, tour de force as far as um, stamina and longevity through vocally as well as um, uh, from an acting standpoint because you have to be present even when I'm on stage and I'm not singing. I have to be present and involved with everyone else that I was on stage. Uh, it, there are moments when you might hear a little ugliness come out um, because the, it, it calls for that. It calls for a little yeah, a little belt in the voice every once in a while. There, there are times when I'm literally screaming my full head off. I, I'm, I'm having mad scenes. I'm having a dream, uh, awful dreams. Uh, the, the last scene where I, I, I basically have a psychotic meltdown. Um, in the midst of what else is going on. <laughs> I'm not going to say what because I don't want to ruin it. Um, but it is very dark. Um, it is very... Um, but at the same time, there is, is strength in it. If you if you can go with the idea that Magda is doing what she has to to forward, to, to forward the path of freedom, yes. there is strength in what she's doing. Yes, and by the way, by the way, there's no. Uh, what's this bit about? I don't want the ugly. I don't want the sad. I don't want. What is that? <laughs> that is that is where the greatest art is. The, uh, I agree the, with you. The greatest liberation art. I it, agree. It comes from this, and and indeed, this opera is, is a great piece of liberation work. If only as a major protest against against certain yes. ways that things work that that should not be happening, and they happen now. We're looking at Ukraine. I mean, there. Yes, and that's one of the things we've actually been discussing constantly, that the cast has been t talking about our own personal stories and our, our own personal experience with either bureaucracy or communism or going through conflicts or going through different um, immigration situations. I know when I was a young girl, my, my family was amazing and, and actually took me to what was the USSR. And I remember seeing the bugs in our hotel rooms and asking my mom, what is that? And ta and seeing our tour guide not even be able to enter the same um, stores that we could go into. My, my parents were asking her well, what she would like as a gift, and she couldn't even indicate. If the people in the store knew it was going to her, they could arrest her. It was, you know, and, and as an eight-year-old girl, that that has left an absolute impression on me for the rest of my life about what freedom is and what what the the United States is really based on. And how lucky of you to have this part. I'm going to have to do the overview here. You've got to get to rehearsal in like 10 minutes. So <laughs> back to rehearsal. Here we are. I'm speaking with Alexandra Lobianco, soprano. She is singing the uh, lead role of Magda Sorel in Giancarlo Man Manotti's really much deserved of greater viewing yes. the console a masterpiece winner of the pulitzer prize etc cetera, etc cetera. i said all that stuff we're talking about opera santa barbara in the beautiful city of santa barbara i hope you're enjoying yourself uh, in i am <laughs> uh, friday april 25th at 7 30 p.m at the granada theater the grand skyscraper in our little community but the beautiful beautiful redone uh, uh, hall the Granada Theater, Friday, April 25th at 7.30 in the evening, and Sunday, April 27th at 2.30 in the afternoon. Once again, as I say, ad nauseum to all my uh, Southern California friends that watch this, what a beautiful opportunity to come up, have a beautiful day in Santa Barbara, and see this opera, and may I dare say, none of you in the cast have ever performed it before, I'll just bet you. What do you think? Um, you know, honestly, Joshua Jeremiah has covered the role of John Sorrell before, Maybe and in Seattle. Seattle just did a production in February. Maybe. They did. Seattle just did one. And actually, um, our Vera, um, Carla Jablonski, is actually going to Florida Grand Opera to perform The Secretary soon. But I shouldn't have. Oh, crap. I shouldn't have said that, maybe. But uh, no, you shouldn't have said <laughs> I'm so excited for her. It's, it's wonderful. We're, we're uncensored here. Uh, so <laughs> marvelous. And also, just something about maybe this thing's starting to get some legs again this yes, week. Yes, it yeah. is. Um, more, more and more people are, are, are actually realizing what an important and, and poignant uh, piece this is because, because of what we're going back into with the talk of, as you said, the Ukraine, yeah. and even with the talk of what would happen with Putin over uh, the, the Olympics, which, uh, that's a whole other story <laughs> unto itself. Exactly. Shh. 
<laughs> Actually, I, I can't wait to chat with you. We'll have to have a drink sometime and really let, 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 let the dirt fly. That sounds like a marvelous idea. <laughs> but but uh, in, indeed, and help, I was going to say something here, something ab about this rig. I just went out of my head, folks. Oh, no. So, so sorry. Uh, but we've, we've got the figures. we got this place. Oh, how about ticket sales? Hello. Uh, uh, you know, uh, yes. uh, the Granada Theater ticket office phone number is in Santa Barbara, area code 805-899-2222. Friday evening at 7.30, the 25th of April, Sunday afternoon at 2.30, the 27th of April, Giancarlo Minotti's uh, The Consul, a masterpiece that is not often performed. This deserves your attention, it's folks. It's in English. And of course it's in English. By the way, li libretto by the composer, as he's not un unknown to do. Anyway, great piece. Uh, I've got to let you go. Alexandra La Bianco. Have I done that? Lo Bianco, excuse Lo me Bianco. so much. Right at the last minute I screw up. Oh, dear. Anywho, get back to rehearsal. I can't wait Thank to see you. you in this performance. Wonderful work. I've waited since uh, eighth grade. It will be exciting. I, I can promise you that we've got some wonderful uh, opportunity working with John, Jonathan Fox, um, who's directing the show, and who's from the Ensemble Theater, and it's really, we're doing a lot of character work, and it's a little more interesting that, than I think people will expect. By the way, I'm glad you mentioned Jonathan Fox. I just saw his production of Mes Metamorphosis. As did I. It was uh, wonderful. The use of the water was phenomenal. Yeah. So, anywho, sweet town we live in, and thank you very much for being part of it. My See pleasure. You. Thank Excellent. you so much. Bye-bye.